Well, let's give Jesus a praise offering. Amen. Come on, praise him, church. Laske evredo no moske te kele bera ma. Laske evreda. Paruska evredo de na. Have your seats. Have your seats. I'm not going to be long, but I want to share something that is just uh, that um, I haven't prepared or anything. I'm just going as the Spirit of the Lord leading me. I had other notes, but I don't, as a rule, I do not prepare for, a, um, for Sundays, nights, mostly Sunday mornings even as well. I, I don't prepare at all. And um, uh, hoping or trusting and knowing that it is, that it is, um, uh, that it will be straight from heaven. Are you guys with me? Go with me to Luke chapter number 8 on the screen. Luke chapter number 8 verse 26. Say so, so with your reputation. I have lost a mind long ago. Otherwise, I would not be able to be used by God. Are you guys with me? God does not anoint reputation. He anoints character. I'm going to say it again. He does not anoint reputation or what people think of you. He anoints character. Are you guys with me? He looks at what is going on behind closed doors. He looks at a person's heart and he says that person is hungry or they don't care what people think of them. They, uh, they please no people. They don't care about their reputation which means I can use them for my glory. Are you guys with me? Religion tries to conform us into an identity that you are not and says to you, you are only acceptable if you are this way. Dear God, am I speaking to my enemies or, or people with me here? Okay. <laughs> I was recently told that, you know, I'm a false prophet because of how I dress. So I'm thinking, so when, since when do we determine the gift of God by somebody's dress code. Are you guys with me? Fashion is not uh, as much as what dressing will make you either a prophet or a false prophet is, this, is, is the same as what you sleep in your garage and you become a car. Type of common sense. But we have pointed to that and say look that one is like this or that they are fake and false and the and the body of Christ has been done home because where we are supposed to feed our people or preach the name of Jesus Christ from the pulpit we preach other names are you guys with me and in Centurion, as you know, that we planted in Centurion first uh, three years ago and then we came here and the church is there successful it is going strong. But one thing I refused to do was submit to the pressure of ministry where it would either uh, destroy my family or the opinions of ministers. Uh, in fact, I would get, they would get so upset because I would refuse to go to a uh, pastor's fraternals. And when I would send my, I went there once and I looked at all these pastors and none of them even raised their hands in worship. And then I said, no, I'm, I sent my team and then they went once or twice and then they don't want to go. It is a sad state of affairs when the congregation members have more discernment or worships God more than a pastor does. Eli, who sat and he saw uh, Hannah weeping at the altar, begging because she was barren. Are you guys with me? And Eli thought to himself, this woman must be drunk because her lips are moving, but she's not speaking. But he failed to have discernment or sensitivity or perception to know that she's having an encounter with God. And what he called drunkenness was her speaking to God. Are you guys with me? So when you fall to such a state that your perception no longer can see or your perception looks and sees somebody encountering God and you say that is of the devil 
or they are being fake or false or this. How many times have we been, have we been uh, accused of witchcraft, not by Satanists or people out the world, by ministers? We had somebody writing a book and uh, putting a chapter in about me and I was like, Aish, if I make them money, then it's probably okay, you know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I won't tell you the name because all of you will know the name. So let's rather keep that one silent. And I just said, I said to, to the person, and obviously they're sending me voice notes, attacking, threatening me. Uh, minister, are we live now? Okay, so I can't say what I want to say. You know, I showed, yeah, I showed you uh, yesterday conversations of the people that they look up to and that they think hate me, yet look at what the people would say. You know, when you are a prophet, make no mistake that prophets can recognize other prophets uh, and um, you know and and I saw this person obviously writing a book about I don't want to waste time on them and it, it is a sad state it is a sad state of affairs I think my wife and I wanted to welcome them and just be friendly uh, you know when they came to our church visiting the ones in Centurion and they walked out obviously you know after being friendly with us a uh, fake on their side I think because we genuinely mean, meant it in our hearts and the next thing I see a book written a chapter I did this I did that I did this I'm thinking I thank God for them because God is using them to increase the anointing on my life or he is using them to chisel me and to, uh, you know, Jesus said, you must be persecuted. If your gospel has not gotten you into persecution, your gospel is not real. If your Christianity, if family members haven't pointed at you and say, you have changed, everything about you is different, something is wrong, then you must know that uh, you have not lived Christianity yet. Or when they say, look, you, you know, you're getting weird or super spiritual, you have not lived a Christian life if a finger has not been pointed to you and say look uh, you know you're faking miracles or this or that let's look because somebody's faking miracles doesn't mean everybody's doing it I uh, don't blame us for what other people are doing and uh, those who prophesy I said somebody said to me accuse me they said you know I, I, I asked the people um, information or we get the people before and information I said don't you think at least one person we prophesied after over the how many of the last three years would have come to the party and said something um, but there is something there is the gift of God is still genuine it is not determined by how you dress or by how you are um, uh, how you are talking in fact the more genuine it is the more genuine God would use you the more genuine your speaking is without putting on a mask or a pretense, the more the gift of God will flow. He's looking for no hindrance or limitation. As I said, Krugersdorp is tough, but it's not too tough for us. I think the problem that Krugersdorp have on me is that I'm not preaching here for money. We have money, meaning it's, uh, you know, we are going. We are here with no intention. I remember the first day uh, we planted Centurion. Somebody came huge gift I think it was like a hundred grand it, now you must understand the church was we just planted um, a small and then uh, it was three months and we backed out the place then we went bigger and so on and uh, and just said look I want to let you know this is the money that I give this is how much I will give every month and we just want to let you know that is what we so you know i just rolled my eyes and i thought okay they're gonna expect me to jump to their um to their uh, uh, uh whatever and when we, as soon as we didn't do as they expected they huffed up and huffed and puffed up and left and uh you know and then they were tithing and i thought oh my goodness people on my team is tithing more than that you know uh, that we're not even having their own businesses 
And the church, many times, you know, it's amazing. We say, you know, the wolf will come in shepherds, uh, sorry, the wolf will come in sheep's clothing. But it doesn't say the wolf will come in shepherd's clothing. It says the wolf will come in sheep's clothing. So we are quick to, to say that um, this or, uh, or uh, that will happen, uh, meaning that, uh, you know, this person is fake, this person is false. And we're doing it at our own peril, not knowing the fact that we say it means it's the judgment of God on us. I read this morning in the book of Isaiah where, uh, where God is saying, look, you look at the prophet and you say that it, he is a maniac. In fact, you look, at the, the, uh, you look at those who are anointed and they are maniacs. You say this, you look at the prophet, you say he's a fool. He's foolish or he's fake. It is, and God is speaking, look, he's saying, you're looking at a real prophet, but you say he's fake. When a people do it, you must know a judgment is on a nation. Because as soon as they speak against any anointed person, and I said this morning, how many of you are anointed? Okay, only those who say the others are doubting. But uh, for you have this anointing inside of you to teach you in all things. Are you guys with me? The anointing is available for every person. But it is the anointing that is your protection. So when the scripture says, do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. It is not saying only, okay, you know what? Uh, these are just these fake prophets that are trying to do this or that or whatever. No, 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 no. He's speaking of the body of Christ saying, yes, prophets do them no harm. Meaning don't even think of doing them harm. Touch not my anointed. You have to physically touch them. But harming means you are just thinking of doing something harm. So he puts prophets on a higher level. But he's saying, look, it's the anointing that protects. That the fact that I place my anointing upon you. If that somebody touches you, they are touching me, says the Spirit of God. Are you guys with me? Because the anointing is a part of God that is on you. But you have to believe in yourself or have boldness for that anointing to come. Acts chapter number 4 verse 13, and they say, the Bible says that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they knew that they were uneducated and untrained men. And they realized that these men had to be with Jesus. They had to be uh, spending time with Jesus because some anointing rubbed off on them. And one of the signs of that anointing is boldness. When the anointing comes on you, it'll be mistaken for pride or arrogance. Are you guys with me? David walking to Goliath. And his brothers are saying to him, look, what is this pride in your heart that you've come here down to the battlefield and saying these words that you have left your little sheep, that you have left your small little church and this pride in your heart that you've come. David looked at Goliath and he said, he said, uh, but accomplishing squat. Okay. 40 days. Goliath is hurling insults and intimidation and threats by his words. And Israel is just sitting in uh, meetings discussing, okay, um, how are we going to do that? Um, you know what? No one taking action. David says, comes, he says, look, I can take him out, but, so the but, he said, how much will you pay me? Which means, are you guys with me? I'm teaching your Bible to you. So he says, but what shall be given to the man, done for the man who takes out Goliath? He said, no, you will have, you can marry the king of the, the daughter of the king. You can, uh, you will be friends with Jonathan, best friends with the son of the king. You'll be given lands and properties. And David thinks, okay, I will use my anointing. Why? You know, I remember I used to pre preach and it was anointed. Um, we had glorified meetings and the glory of God came in. But I had no money. And uh, somebody, you know, came to me that is uh, uh, international for me, one of the most top prophets that's a mentor of mine. And he came to me and said, 
In fact, the first time he met me, it was about four years ago, five years ago, five years ago, four years ago. He sat in front of my wife and I and said, uh, he said, look, the anointing without money is annoying. Meaning, you get what I preach from here, not what I say, but what I have. Are you guys with me? If I have mums and I'm preaching chicken pox, is that what it is? You will get mums. I was uh, in the same manner when Jesus came. The Bible says even when he was when he was on the cross, they were they were um, auctioning off his clothes. Now tell me, if you auction off his clothes, it must be worth something. I am not speaking prosperity in a way of being fake. I'm speaking and trying to get a truth that it is God's will for you to be blessed. There's no question about it. When, when we are not, when we are, it's a non-negotiable. When we are not fully believing that, we still justify and say, you know what? Maybe it is God's will that I'm going through what I'm going to know. It is His will for you to be blessed. It is His will for you to be healed. Are you guys with me? As much as what you want your children to have everything in the world, how much more your heavenly father. But it's a mindset of religion that says you must, you know, keep the pastor poor, keep him humble. How many times have I, uh, how many times have I had, uh, oh, come on, you people with money. I've had uh, somebody came into, into our office and gave money a cash like this, I remember taking it, but something didn't sit well with me. I said, go, call the person back, I'm giving it back. I said, it is tainted. The hold of money over my life has been broken, which means it made my intentions with ministry pure. Then when I would try to act when I was younger or preached under an anointing, but I had no money, but act as if you know, I'm all humble. I'm doing this thing for no money, yet I'm doing it to survive. Let's just be really get honest. God wants you to be blessed in every way. The thing that keeps people from blessings is strongholds and beliefs they've built up in their mind. One of them, God doesn't want me to be blessed. Second one, money is evil. Nowhere does the Bible say money is evil. Are you guys with me? Uh, in fact, Jesus spoke about it more than anything else. The root, the love of money is the root of all evil. I, I think, let me just explain this because people don't understand it and uh, I've explained it in our ministry previously. Uh, how many of you know this is an iPad? How many of you know I can love this iPad? There's nothing wrong in loving this iPad. I can say I love technology or I love Apple and not Samsung but dare somebody say I love money and not this yet it's the same thing this is money in a different form money is not money is just the the medium of what is actually behind it it doesn't say you can't love it says the love of money meaning the love of this iPad is evil but how many of you know this iPad cannot love? Are you guys with me? It's not a life. It doesn't have the ability to love. But how come money have the ability to love? That is when it becomes mammon in your life. And it now has a love that it has for you because you made it a God. That's why you have something called the love of God and I love God. Two different things. The love of God is because God is alive and He has the ability to love. He is love. Are you guys with me? So money, when I make money my God, it now has the ability to have love. That's where the scripture comes in. The love of all money is the root of evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Are you guys with me? It's not sitting well. I'm trying to get to strongholds. And this is, trust me, this is a stronghold. I know 
the spirit of poverty, the demon of poverty, rebels at the moment of its deliverance. When you speak of money in the church, or when you speak of sex in the church, those two things, people just go silent. He said he received both. (laughs) Stay with your strongholds and relax. I'm not one of those ministries that is like, uh, uh, yeah, okay, that is all silent. I need people to respond. The voice of God works on somebody that has emotions. And we have tried to cut the church down and say, look, don't have, have emotions. No, God is an emotional God. He's wanting your spirit to be alive. Let me tell you, when the glory comes in, when revival begins to come, and we have seen revival, especially in our church, in fact, from the first service, when it comes, when we plant it in sanctuary, and somebody said to me, uh, you know, uh, don't you battle with these type of services or not anointed services? And after three years, we looked at me and said, we've never had not one not anointed service. Not one. Because when I went into Centurion, I had an angel that walked next to me and said, I want you to plant a church that is a start of encounter in the city of uh, Centurion on the 18th of September. When we planted here in Krugersdorp, I was, I was in a hotel room when a mantle came on me to do a certain assignment here. We didn't even look for this place. It stumbled upon us. Are you guys with me? It says that Ruth stumbled into the fields of Boaz. You can stumble in your miracle by accident. It is about location. Say with your location. In the garden of Gethsemane, listen to me. Jesus was praying and the, uh, the people came with Judas to take him out 600 over 600 special forces and they asked the question and and, uh, you know Jesus said who are you looking for 600 think of that that is that is three times more that is that is here right now special forces standing in front of him and he's saying what are you looking for who are you looking for they said we're looking for the one that is Jesus he said these words he said I am he when he said those words, the Bible says the power of God knocked them all backwards. Are you guys with me? They stood up asking the same question, which means they were confused. When the glory comes, you will be so drunk, you will be confused about what's going on. At Acts chapter number 2, the Bible says, but we are filled with the Holy Ghost, like Joel prophesied, that I shall pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall see visions, and your young men shall dream dreams. And even on your men servants and your maid servants shall I pour out my Spirit, and they will prophesy. Are you guys with me? When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will not be able to stop prophesying. You will look drunk to others. You'll be under the influence of another spirit. The Holy Ghost. Are you guys with me? That is why alcohol for me. A lot of people have this question when it comes to alcohol. I have never seen somebody flow. Flowing in the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking of flowing. When they are under the influence of alcohol. I mean we came out of a city. We ministered that. We won't say the name now. Uh, the one that I said I don't want to go back to in itinerant ministry <laughs> and I'm looking and this one minister messages me tuning me something what 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 about somebody else I'm thinking but as you are writing now I see you sitting in a bar at your home drinking filled with the spirit do not be drunk with wine but in anticipation in excess be filled with the Holy Ghost meaning you cannot be flowing I have never seen ministers or people flowing in the Holy Ghost when there's alcohol involved because now you are under another spirit you are influenced under another spirit 
Are you guys with me? Uh, where are we now? Where are we now? I was speaking. Oh, Garden of Gethsemane. Let's look. The 600 soldiers fell backwards. Then something happens in the book of Mark. The Bible says that a young little boy or a young man ran through the Garden of Gethsemane in that scene naked with a cloth over his body and you will see that the garden of Gethsemane is not close to a city because some commentators say this is Mark John Mark that was running uh, through the through the scene others say it is a it is somebody close by of the city but it makes no sense because it's too far away how it was located or situated in that day the only thing that was next to the garden of Gethsemane was a graveyard the cloth which was wrapped around the young boy's body is in the Greek a grave cloth which you bury someone with which means that when Jesus said I am he that the boy just happened to be to be to be buried in the right location that when Jesus said it he didn't even mean to do raise somebody it happened by accident which means there are accidental miracles when you are in the right location uh, are you guys with me which means you can sit in a location where the anointing is and you can just say but i'm praying for a family member to get healed or saved and the next thing you go home and your bank account is full of money it's called an accidental miracle we believe that he can save our lives but we don't believe he can bless us financially are you guys with me say with these strongholds so the way we a stronghold is broken is by replacing it with truth but listen let me just let me just read you listen to this then they said to where are we now I, then they said to the country of, uh, here we will still take it slow, uh, like um, we'll be finished just now. In Centurion, it'll be like from five to 10, packed every week, packed. And then pastor's phone, we say, uh, Leon, you're going to not grow, the church won't grow. I said, but I can't stop it. And it was packed every week from five to 10, five to 10, five to 10, five to 10. When your spirit has been activated and it has increased in a capacity where now it can receive, you can sit 10 hours under the word and understand it. The problem is that some of you might not understand even what I'm saying now because there's a problem with capacity. But you will see a change within three months from now. Like I said, by the end of November, by, by November, by the end of November, you will see so many delivered. We had F1, how many, well, we had a lot of deliverances, see people running out, stuff like that. When we do deliverance night, we have washed the carpets afterwards. Are you guys with me? And that's not me laying hands, that's my team. Then they said, listen to this, to the country of God, uh, Gadarene, which is opposite Galilee. Next verse. And when Jesus stepped out from the boat on the land, they met him a certain man. Are you guys with me? What happened was just before he went there, he went through a storm. There was a storm that tried to attack the boat. Then he reached the island. This storm was sent by a principality. Possessing the man, which we call the madman of Gadari, which was a principality. That's why it was a legion. That was in him this principality by this one person was controlling that whole city which comes from the tribe of god are you guys with me and i can even go back into the old testament to say how prophecies was released over god as to what oppression happened and this man held uh, bounded that city jesus stepped onto the land and there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time and he wore say with him no clothes see if you're demon possessed there's even no clothes involved or it's bad clothes nor did he live in a house but in the tombs next verse when he saw jesus he cried out fell down before him 
And with a loud voice, he said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, put in the King James, listen to this. Put in the King James. Quickly, guys, I beseech you. Say with you, beseech. In the actual King James, because there's online, there's like two King James, which is not right. It says these words. It says, I adjure you in the name of God. Do not torment us. The word adjure means command. The demons, Jesus carried such an anointing on him that when his foot touched the land, the demons ran out, came to him and said, we command you in the name of God to leave us and stop tormenting us. There's an anointing that can come on your life that the demons will even try to call upon God to look for help. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. They'll, they'll be like, look, the devil cannot help us with this one. We need God. Or try, even though you, I'm speaking it in a joking way. Are you guys with me? Next verse. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and fetters. And he broke bands and was driven. Next verse. I want to get to a point. And Jesus asked him saying, what is your name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. It was a principality that was holding him, that was binding that whole city. So much so that the city chased Jesus away. Being upset with him because he brought a unrest. So the gathering. Uh, so the Kruger's door, I mean, I suppose, I, I'm sorry, uh, gathering. Everybody was upset, including the shepherds. Because he bought a shaking. And they said, what have you done to this city? And Jesus asked him, saying, what is your name? He said, Legion, because we're many. Next verse. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. They put a new King James for me now, guys. Listen to this. Listen to this. The demons begged him. Why is it taking so long? And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. Next verse. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him, listen, put us into the put us into them. And he permitted them, he allowed them. Next verse. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine. Do you know there's no such thing as house cleaning okay I don't know people are upset there you know these people uh, because of that thing uh, I'm I know demons I've been doing deliverance for very long usually those things are just justifications and excuses for the condition of our life it comes out of the heart I don't have a pentagram on your wall but I'm speaking in balance. Are you guys with me? Some people say, you know, that little statue, that's got demons. We must do house cleaning. When I got saved, I cleaned so many things. I had nothing left. I had my Bible in my room. I had anointing oil. And I had water because I was fasting. That was it. And I realized, but that never made me anointed. I know and I believe and Christians can get possessed. And you'll see it in this place that... Uh, that Christians can have demons even as people are set free even the F1 and our F1 is so successful our, our first step of our vision I think within three years we've taken over 900 people through it um, you know uh, it was so bad that people would fly in from all over just to come for there and we had to stop them because they would want to come from other churches come and then and they leave and that's not I'm not yet to, to clean other churches we had to clean our own children first and um, and we had to stop that and uh, and uh, so this thing with house cleaning, you know, uh, uh, yes, in a degree of, of witchcraft, but people, we must understand as we read this verse, the Bible says Jesus permitted them. You have the ability, didn't he say that you will do greater works than him? You have the ability to allow a demon to do something or not. 
Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake. So the lake and drowned. Now this is where they came from. Where the storm was in. Which means that the storm that tried to stop Jesus from going to the city in the first place. A principality looking and saying, look, that man is going to bring deliverance. We must stop him before he even touches this, this shores. Sent a storm. Jesus looked at this principality, casted him out, put him into the swine. The swine is sent back into the place where the storm came from. Meaning that every curse that has been spoken against you, you have the anointing to send it back to the sender. That it causes and do what it was meant to try to do to you. He sent the devil back to where it came from. Are you guys with me? Next verse. When those who fed to them saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and the country. Everybody got upset. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Say with me, clothed in his right mind. Say it again. Say clothed in his right mind. The first sign of deliverance usually is good clothing. Okay. I'm speaking of a cleaning up. A, a People can look and see, but wait, this person is delivered. We have set a bad example for the world out there. Where people are like, but why do we want this God? They're preaching, He can bless, but look at their lives. They're in debt. They're preaching. Uh, and, and, and the Muslims or the unbelievers are thinking, but why must we go there? Because we are richer. For that reason and that reason alone. I remember I made up my, I have seen debt cancellation. Uh, I have gone full out in ministry where not one cent of finances and then somebody would get a dream and settle every amount of debt that I had because of a seed that I've sown we have gone through all of that but I made a decision if I can prophesy over other people and it can happen to what I'm saying to them even as I'm saying that you will have this amount of money by next year and it happens I thought but why can I not do it over myself and so many times we have things to correct in other people's lives but we don't do it to ourselves um, when we become an example people will just look and say well, look, what, what do you do? where do you go to church? everything about you is full of light it has changed I am here to prophesy and this is the message that God has given me even when we planted in Centurion is that there's much more to you than what the enemy has made you to believe that you know I must live on minimum wage um, my family will go nowhere you know it's the economy it's the government it's this listen when you carry the anointing money will find you somehow when your value increases now let's, I'm not going to even touch on business because we do a lot of things with business but let's say value as a believer when your value as a believer increases the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 60 that the Gentiles, that for the wealth of the Gentiles will come to you because of your light. It will look and find somebody that is shining full of light. It says that princes and, and noblemen and royal people will come from afar to come and see you. Are you guys with me? My daughter is screaming more than, uh, than, than you guys. Next verse. Next verse. They also, who had seen it, told them by what means he would had been demon possessed, was healed. Now listen. Next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Uh, then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Gadarenes asked them to depart from them. For they were seized with great fear. And he got into the boat and returned. Let it not be, like say with me, it will not be in Krugersdorp. 
because I can tell you now deliverance is coming to the city. I have received I have received so many messages from ministers asking for help, obviously attacking us, but others asking for help. And like I said, my strong point is I am not here to survive. I come and I go. Obviously, I pass to you, which means that I think within either this week or, you know, we, we just drive around, we're visiting people and so on, uh, get to get to know them. But we're first going to have a new members evening. When's the new members evening? After the conference. Directly after the conference, we have a members evening. So technically, you're not members yet. Uh, are you guys with me? Say with his strongholds. There was a stronghold over this city, but we're touching our strongholds in the mind. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. I want to I wanna get to one thing. And I want this anointing to fall tonight. Um, go with me to, go with me to, go with me to 1 Samuel chapter number 30 verse 1. Let's see, let's see how we can do this. Say this words with you. Say anointed for war. I was in Namibia when God gave me this message. And I remember I was standing alone in a city. And it was a huge church. It was about, let's say, five, six hundred people or so. Uh, 500 and I remember standing and I was preaching and nothing happened the first night preaching the second night nothing and the third night the glory of God fell like a waterfall in the whole church everybody was down couldn't get up demons screaming all over I remember putting my mic down and I walked out I went to the hotel and the anointing was carried and carried the glory still from that encounter at the church and I walked to the hotel receptionist, asked her for the key for my uh, room. And uh, I said, look, and I have the key. And the woman looked at me and began to shake. And she said, what is this that I'm feeling? And tears filled her eyes. Now, this is unbelievers that can experience glory. Yet the church, the glory has left. Ikabot, laying hands, people are standing more stiff than this pulpit are you guys with me not in our ministry but uh, it happens calls the love of God is left condemnation law legal, uh, legalistic cannot even experience or know if God is sitting here next to them or not but yet I stand by an unbeliever and the glory of God comes on this person just by me asking for a key not knowing that I'm a minister and then we saw, and Stephen was with me, we saw a, literally a nationwide revival. We went back and we just went and we saw thousands saved. I think 13,000 people in a matter of two weeks. And the glory of God came in. You know, I want that glory to return to the church. Because the church has gone Ichabod. And we have become Eli's where even our church members will have more discernment or a stronger relationship with God is what we have. And the anointing has departed. Mm. Are you guys with me? I'm telling you, everything can be taken from me except this anointing. Now it happened, listen to this. When David and his men came to Ziklag, before I get into this, say with you these words, say anointed for warfare. Say it like this, say anointed for war. When I was in Namibia, this is when God gave me this message. Now it happened when David and his men to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it down with fire next verse and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great they did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way next verse so David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. It's a Ziklag moment that David experienced. As believers, we experience a Ziklag moment. It is where it feels like everything has been ripped away. Are you guys with me? This was called the dark night of David's soul. Then David and the people who were with him uh, uh, lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Next verse. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Nebuchadnezzar, had been taken captive. Next verse. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. 
They said it's because of him that we are in the Ziklag moment and we're going to kill him. Even his men. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Next verse. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Amalek's sons, please bring me the effort here to me. And Abiathar brought the effort to David. And effort was what the high priest would wear. But there was what we call inside the Urim and the Theorem. Which was, if you really go deep into it, I don't want to get it into it now. But that's how God spoke. The stones would lit up, a light would shone, and they would know what God is saying. Uh, that's what also we get from casting lots from. It's known as in the New Testament what we know the inner witness of the Holy Ghost. They used the casting of lots or the Urim and the Theorem to hear if God is saying yes or no. And there's a secret to those things um, and how the witness of the Holy Ghost is still works inside of us which we teach in the prophetic later on. But listen to this. Then David said to Abiathar, okay, bring the effort. Next verse. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, say with me, pursue. For you shall surely, say with me, overtake. And without fail, say with me, without fail, you will recover all. The word pursue means to irritate your enemy. He says, you will pursue the enemy, meaning you will irritate the enemy. You will do something that irritates him. What irritates him? Becoming anointed with oil, where if your foot tread on the shores of Gadarene, like Jesus' feet, that the devil got upset and stirred. That even when Paul came to the island of Malta, that when he went to take wood to increase the fire, which speaking of the fire of the Holy Ghost in the church, that a, that a serpent jumped out because of the heat of the fire, latched itself on the arm of Paul. Are you guys with me? Paul irritated the devil wherever he was. That even the seven sons of Sceva, that when they tried to cast out a devil, the demon said, look, Paul we know, Jesus we know, but who the hell are you? Meaning, Jesus, we know he's here. Paul, we know, putting him right next to Jesus. Reputation. Are you guys with me? The devil is not looking at your anointing. He's looking at the anointing of the one who sent you. He's looking at the anointing of his father or his spiritual father upon your life. Are you guys with me? The devil is not afraid of your anointing. He's afraid of the one who sent you. Because the sons of Sceva did exactly what all the others were doing. But there was something about Paul that the devil feared. It wasn't his fasting. It was the fact that he had an encounter with God. That revelation determines your level of authority. That when we planted a church in Centurion, it was so easy. I said, to, you know, we're trying to get our building empty where other people are trying everything to get people into the building. We are having problems of it being too full. Because why? When an angel walks to you and tell you plant a church, there's no guesswork there after. There's no trust as in like, I must now step out in faith. No. No, an angel tells you. It's not a feeling. Are you guys with me? With that revelation, there is no way to fail. Or when the, the enemy would bring like... Uh, problems or I wouldn't think hey, did I hear from God or not or no there's no doubt in it so David inquired of the Lord saying shall I pursue God says pursue so they pursue you shall irritate the devil you shall surely say with me overtake the word overtake means to suddenly come upon are you guys with me let me say it like this uh Overtake means to subdue the enemy. That the thing that has put you into bondage, this is what the word subdue means. When Jesus' disciples came back to him and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. 
subject. They are subdued to us in your name, not the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus means the name in your name is, is a noma, which means character. Which means you can say, come out in the name of Jesus. If you don't carry the character of Christ in closed doors, that devil will scan you up and down and think, but you have no prayer life. You don't carry the character. Are you guys with me? Then people think that, but wait, wait, God is not real, this Christianity is still because I say in the name of Jesus, nothing happens. No, you can say, you don't even, you can just breathe, you can just blow. When you carry the character, that is what it means in the name of Jesus. In the no, noma, character. Are you guys with me? You shall overtake, which means that thing which have put you into bondage. You will subject it and make it your subject. If you, if the smoke, if smoking put you into bondage, when the anointing for war comes on your life, you will put it into bondage underneath you. It means to make a slave of something, to become the master of something, to bind with chains, to subject. Are you guys with me? Look, pursue, overtake, and say with you without fail. Meaning when you receive this promise tonight or it becomes a revelation to you You must know but wait. I will have victory. It is not a but or a if or a maybe it is without fail That I will Recover all say with you recover all Pursue with you pursue Overtake and recover all That is the promise of God are you guys with me? That everything that has been lost, when you get or you move in the anointing, the devil must pay you back. Say with me seven times more. Say it again. Say seven times more. Hmm. Go with me. Uh, where is it? Uh, Proverbs 6. Verse 30, 31, 30. Listen to this. Listen to this. Say it again. Say recover all. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is in starving. Next verse. Yet when he is found out, he must, say with him, must restore seven folds which means that when the devil is found out that he has stolen something from you it is payback time it is look how many of you know god is dangerous he's powerful there's one thing higher than god the bible says that he exalts his word above his name which means that when it comes to god's word it is his integrity he is bound by his word that you can use his word and say but God your word says this you say this and he is obligated to move why are you so looking confused that religion told you this stuff isn't real are you guys with me when you receive a promise from God it's called you can say but God your word says this and he is obligated that's why even when you receive a prophetic word we say yeah it doesn't have to come to pass it has to at some point whether it is to your family or your family's family but if his word has gone forth it does not turn to him without to him back to him with without void with void it does not return back to him not being done what it was sent to do are you guys with me one thing higher than God exalts his word above himself. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the book of Genesis. That's the beginning of the earth and this heavens that we know. But then there's another beginning, John 1 verse 1, which is the beginning of all beginnings. This is in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among men. 
which means that when God speaks we are the only creation that he has given his extension of a creative ability we are the only creation that has vocabulary or a vernacular the intelligence of speech to communicate which means that when we speak we can create it is your divine nature given by God are you guys with me can you hear me in the back you guys look so serious who's sitting you guys looking so serious who's Who's there? Is it Nick? Who's Nick? Is Nico here? Is it Nico's mom? He looks so serious. Hey? You're listening. <laughs> I love you. Tony Elise. Okay, tell Nico he must come. Where is he? Okay, say with me. He's sick. <laughs> say with me. Restoration. Recover all. When the devil is found out, the thing is, he has been found out upon the cross over 2,000 years ago. When Christ went to the cross, the devil was exposed. And if you have lost anything, you can say, but God, it is by legal law. It is my right as a Christian to have sevenfold payback. There is a thing as spiritual rights that you as a citizen and an ambassador has because you hail from another kingdom not from this kingdom are you guys with me there's a world that is beyond this world where you are coming from the when have you seen it's when an ambassador comes from the united states he is not subject to the law of south africa which means he can break the law of south africa to an extent because he's an ambassador. He is held to the law of his country. It's called immunity. Are you guys with me? Sorry? Diplomatic immunity. Which means there's a spiritual diplomatic immunity. That Paul says, for we are ambassadors of Christ. Diplomats. Just journeying through this life. Going to our hometown. Are you guys with me? An ambassador, a spiritual immunity, which means that the laws of this world, the laws of nature, when Jesus came walking to the sea, and he, the Bible says he was looking for a boat and he couldn't find one. And he said, Wow, well, I'm going to walk on the water. And the molecular density of the water changed and obeyed the kingdom that he was coming from. Are you guys with me? Which means if you are, there is diplomatic immunity means that you are not subject to the laws. But number two, if anybody touches an ambassador or has a threat against their life, there is a declaration of war that is immediately alarmed. Meaning if the devil touches you, there is a declaration of war. But you have to understand a revelation that you are from heaven. Even though you are born on this earth, you are not from this earth. You are from heaven. Are you guys with me? Diplom it's declaration of war. This is what we call spiritual rights. Then being in a prophetic church is what we call prophetic rights. But we'll leave that for later. Are you guys with me? Where are we? Go with me to 1 Samuel. Say with me the anointing for war. So I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere. I want to uh, go with me to, uh, to go with me to to 1 Samuel chapter number 30 verse 16 I'll be close I'm closing just now I want to get to this point and we had brought him down here they, they were spread out all over the land eating and drinking this was now after David and them pursued overtake and is busy recovering all after his Ziklach moment because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah next verse then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled next verse 
So David recovered all. So he recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Next verse. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all, meaning it doesn't matter who you have lost, what your children may be on drugs or on addictions, that it doesn't matter what the enemy has taken, it will be back, recovered back. When it is recovered, the spiritual law says sevenfold more than what you had. Are you guys with me? Go to the next verse. And David took all the flocks and herds that had driven before those other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. And that is another thing for another day. Let's get to, let's get to, uh, I want to go through to Numbers chapter number one, verse number two. We'll close, we'll close now. So if again, say anointed for war. You know, when there is an anointing or when uh, we minister like this, I can really go and to long minister, uh, prophesy to people. We can do it for long, but the church will grow and you will see we will have evenings, especially the conferences. Our conferences are unforgettable. Really it is. It is not us trying to have a conference. You will see God back, even you that is in this church, by signs, wonders, and miracles. Take a census of all the congregation. In fact, when our building shook under the power, I went home. I didn't say because I was preaching. And uh, we heard angels falling. When I say fall, you are not speaking about a stone on a rock falling. Uh, sorry, a stone on a, on a roof falling. You would hear, and we have a high roof on the top of a mall there, you would hear, like, like that. When we declared that God's glory will come in a physical way. Then the bulgin began to shook. I went home and I remember screenshots of every people sending messages all over. Saying, did you feel the building shook? Did you see this? Did you see the walls shake? Did you see the projectors? And then people took footage and they spread it. You can fake a prophecy. But you cannot fake God backing you up the anointing is a sign of God's approval upon a person's life when I look at somebody and I see the anointing on them I keep my hands off them it doesn't matter what they've done it doesn't matter if I disagree with them I keep my mouth shut because the anointing means that heaven at some other point approved of them Take a, listen to this, Numbers 1 verse 2. Take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Here God is saying, listen, I want you to count everyone. By their families. Say with you, by their families. By their father's houses. Say with you, by their father's houses. According to the number of names, every male individually. Next verse, listen to this. From 20 years old and above, all who are able. Say with you, able to go to war in Israel. He's saying, listen here, there is a certain quality or requirement of people that is able to go to war. Number one, from what father's house are they coming? What DNA is in their spirit? Somebody came to me in our church in uh, Centurion and said, I want to prophesy, uh, so I want to prophesy like you. How do you get standing in front of somebody and, or, and see their name or this? Or how do you say, I want to do the specifics. I said, what church are you in? I, um, I said, uh, they, I think they said to me, live in the word. I said, it's an awesome church. It's a great church, but every church has their uh, specific anointing, has their specific tribe. I said, you will never prophesy forensic. When I say forensic specific, the way we do. So, and the kid just looked at me. I said, you will never. Because if the root is holy, the whole branch will be holy. Meaning it comes from the top. Are you guys with me? You might launch it or, or pastor, great. But not the prophetic. Oh, the prophetic is not, is not. The prophetic will confuse. That is why I cannot even get along with pastors. And as much as I've tried to my peril, they, are, they cannot understand. They said, I will never be allowed to plant a church in Centurion. 
And we did. Then they said, we're not allowed to come into the city. And we did. A prophet cannot, exp it, it cannot explain their encounters to a pastor, an evangelist, or a teacher. Um, because it is at a le different level of revelation. Uh, God makes himself known to his prophets and appears to them. For you to stand on a stage and say you are a prophet is not a light thing. Now there are some that obviously does it, and, but you, will ne you, you can fake miracles, signs, and even prophecy. But you cannot fake church growth. Because where Jesus is lifted high, he draws all men to himself. Are you guys with me? That is what grace is, a measure of grace. People's lives will be, will be changed. But look, a prophet, you cannot, you, you know, the thing is we want to say there's Old Testament prophet, New Testament prophets. No, there's one type of prophet. That is it. It has not changed except for it's not, no longer just the only voice of God. People can hear the voice of their shepherd. My sheep knows my voice. Are you guys with me? But the function of a prophet hasn't changed in any way. This is because we use that to dilute the ministry of a prophet. God still sends prosperity where prophets go. And nations have crumbled who, attuk, who attacked their prophets. Because of, uh, and then you would see poverty coming in. I remember Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe saw destruction because they chased out their prophets. Are you guys with me? We have many times politicians. We have many times people um, that would not even declare themselves. We have many times ministers. I've had in Centurion. Ministers would come and sit right at the back. Not tell anybody who they are. And then they would just come for a word. I think it was a few weeks ago. Somebody I called out a family that came specifically for one word. A very strong family in ministry. I didn't know them personally. They just heard about it and they came. And standing in front of them, I remember saying, your wife this, your daughter this, uh, your birthday at this date, or, you know, uh, your wife is, uh, your, or, you know, the do your daughter's room looks like this. And then the wife is calling as I'm talking. I say, answer the phone. Answer the phone. I began to say this, this, that. Then I looked at the person that was in ministry for very long and uh, very... Uh, a very good reputation I didn't know them but they came for one thing you see prophecy it's okay to say things but if you don't get to a solution that people are looking for it means nothing so I could have said all those things and it is okay but they wanted to know one thing must they go there or stay here and I said stay here don't go there just that and uh but you get into a place where people come to prophets for consultation. Are you guys with me? I've had pastors who would attack me in the behind the scenes, ask me for help. <laughs> from 20 years old, say with me from father's houses. Say with me from the tribe. It says that they were selected to go to war depending on what tribe they were in. What DNA was in their, in their spiritual lives. That you are, Paul said, look, you are a partaker of my grace. Ay, 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 I don't know. Are my words falling on like dead ground? Paul said, look, I have a measure of grace. And you are a partaker, a co-sharer of my grace, not God's grace. Meaning there's a grace, Paul is saying, that I'm carrying. That when we partake in this thing, your, in, your measure of grace is going to increase. And you'll be able to do things that you won't be able to do before that. It is a measure of grace. He said, I have come to you to establish you. I have longed to impart to you some spiritual gift. Meta didomai, meaning to, as long as you are with me, there is importation of a spiritual gift. That when Jonathan left David's side, he fell down dead and the enemy killed him. That when Aaron, when Moses took the priestly garment of Aaron, Aaron fell down dead. It's about association. The grace that God places upon a ministry or upon a person to do a certain vision. I always say that God does not leave a city. He leaves a man. It has been like that from Genesis up to Revelation. God does not leave a town or a city or a nation. He leaves a man. 
Are you guys with me? <laughs> Say with the able to go to war. There are requirements. Go with me to, go with me to, uh, go with me to 1 Chronicles 12 verse 8. And I'll close with this. I know it would take a bit long, but uh, I'm okay. 1 Chronicles 12 verse 8. So with the anointing for war. There's an anointing that God is going to put out even on this. In fact, our church is known for deliverance, for militancy. That when people just look, if you have a demon, you will either stay and get delivered or the, the demon will leave you or you will leave with a demon. Uh, you know, uh, we get some messages even on messages today. Some guys, listen to this. Say the anointing for war. Say it again. Say the anointing for war. I want you to understand this. There's an anointing that you can begin to rise up. Break strongholds that are over a city, but strongholds that are over ourselves as well. And I haven't even touched that. I don't think we'll get to it tonight. So these strongholds. But this whole month is a month of deliverance. Look at this. Some guys joined David at the strongholds in the wilderness mighty men of valor men trained for battle say with it trained for battle who could handle a shield and a spear it says these men were able to use a shield and a spear whose faces were like the faces of lions when you looked at them they looked dangerous are you guys with me go to the next verse at Ezra the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third. Look, let me, I want to get to, I want to read you some verses in here and we'll close with this in this chapter. Say with me, like lions. You must understand that some of these people that, that David went, that, that the mighty man was with David, when they just felt like they jumped into a pit to kill a lion for fun, that some of them had such an anointing for war called the spirit of might on their lives that when they fought they fought and killed people until the sword was stuck to their hands some of them would hurl and throw stones with both hands and kill people are you guys with me mm -hmm. so with me the sword stuck to their hands you must fight until the war, the world, the word becomes a part of you, integrated with you. It says that the word became flesh and dwelt among men. When the word becomes a part of you, it doesn't matter where you don't have to quote one verse. The devil will look and can measure you by the by the by the weight that you know the word. Are you guys with me? We'll still preach on the five realms of power. Kratos is one of the highest realms. Right? Kratos is what gave Jesus the ability to walk upon the water. Kratos is the power that raises people from the dead. Kratos is what we call the power of invincibility. That if somebody puts a gun to your head and shoots, the trigger will pull but nothing will happen. It's the anointing. It's a level of the power of God. That if a thief gets into your house, they will cannot take a step into your house because you are an anointed one. Angels come to your defense. Listen, demons come because of our thoughts, our strongholds. Angels come because of our thoughts. We'll do a series on working with angels that we did at our church in Centurion at our campus there. That angels come because of your words. The Bible says that Daniel, when he was praying and fasting, that Gabriel came to him and said these words to him. I have come to you because of your words. He never said prayers. He never said fasting. He said, I have come to you because of your words. There's an attitude and a sensitivity of your words that can activate angels around you. That always we're looking for a house cleaning, walking into a house and thinking, uh, you know, I sense demons in here. How about you saying, I'm sensing angels? 
When the last have you said, have you heard somebody that is just, they are aware of angelic activity around them. When you get into that realm, that is when angels will begin to manifest to you. I'm not speaking of angel worship, so get that over your head. Are you guys with me? In the New Testament, angels were so common that even when Peter came out of prison and he knocked on the door, that the slave girl that opened the door saw him, went to the church. The slave girl Rhoda went to the church, said, but look, Peter is at the door. They said, no, 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 it must be his angel. Meaning his angel looks like him. Meaning your angel looks like you. Are you guys with me? That even Paul said, listen, for the angel's sake, do not do this, do not wear hats, this, that. Now we don't, that's not the tradition that we are in right now. And Paul meant it another way. But he said, for the angel's sake, meaning in their worship, angels were so common that the whole church knew about them there, saw them standing there. One of the signs of our church would be planted. Angels would, listen, you would get scared when angels would come in. One person was sleeping or two people were sleeping. I don't know if you were there or not, but somebody was sleeping in our church. Your Marco was sleeping in our church when we were building, just the first church. And an ang- I was standing on the pulpit the first Sunday. We're preaching. And as I'm preaching, I'm saying, I'm saying there's angels that are now standing in this place around me here. As I'm saying, a message comes through from a, a prophet that is... Uh, that is uh, a, a mentor and a father to me from overseas and sent me a message. He says, right now I see angels standing around you. I said, I just, while I'm preaching, I'm typing like this uh, because I know who I submit to, meaning that, uh, uh, you know, I don't wait to answer. And uh, so I'm preaching, but I'm leaving. I'm answering back. The people are like confused. And I'm saying, no, this, I just actually said it now. That night we left or they slept at this church, angels were on the stage. And the person would get a fright, too scared to walk to there. Angels would be in the church. The people would see my jacket would be taken like this or pulled. People would feel a hand on them. And I would say this and they'd walk through the crowd like this. Let angels become a norm. Because we've given attention to demons too much. Ah, there's a demon here, you know, uh, this, this demon. What about angels? This, you know, there's, there's ley lines that are going through my house or this, this objects or shut up. Let the presence of angels saturate your house. Are you guys with me? Angels have their own will. We'll do a whole series on it. And I'll show you how angels have a will and they decide whether they want to show you or not. That is why, that's why Lucifer could have rebelled. There's more to angels. They're sons of God that we won't even get into what that is. That it says that Job, when Satan came to the, in the presence of the Lord, to speak about Job, that he presented himself together with all the sons of God, presenting themselves to God. Whoa, what are the sons of God? We just read and we think angels. There are things that if you read in scripture, angels are not given to marriage. It is when you look at demons, it is not fallen angels. Let me just uh, knock this one out because there's no scriptural consistency when it comes to angels being demons. Are you guys with me? Because demons have the need to get a body and get into a body because they are disembodied spirits. Why does an angel not have a need to get into a body? Are you guys with me? Angels are bound, the fallen angels. But we have made a doctrine up. And when you get into deliverance, the devil listens because of the anointing. But when people get into apologetics or they really ask you these things, you're not going to be able to answer them. Because we think things we hear. Mm. If angels, if demons have the need to get into a body, as it says, they were cast into dry places, then seeking for a body. It means they once had a body. Angels never had a body, so they don't have to look for a body. Are you guys with me? So that we teach you in Bible school or... uh, 
a bit later on, but listen, let me, let, let, let's close with this one. 1 Chronicles chapter number 12, verse 10. Uh, let me see. Da, da, da. Go with me to, let me see where I can go. Hmm. Go with me to verse Go with me to verse number 17. And I'm going to just give you like three verses just out of, in the, I'm not reading through the whole chapter for time's sake. It says these words, Now the mighty men came to David. These men were men of incredible feet, which I just read to you now and you're going to see more stuff. It says, And David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, those of you that were in our school of disciples would know about this, that if you have come to me peaceably to help me, so that to help me, he didn't say to help God, he said to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me, my enemies, since there's no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Then go with me to, go with me to verse, uh, uh, go through to verse 23. Listen to it. Now these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war. And came to David at Hebron to turn over the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. Now it goes into the mighty men, their feats. Go with me and I want to read to you just one or two feats here, just one or two verses. I'm just looking for them because i got another Bible here. Go with me to verse, as you stay in this chapter, go with me to verse 33. Mm -hmm. Verse 33. Listen to this. Of Zebulon, speaking of these men, there were 50,000 who went out to battle. Say with me, expert in war. With all weapons of warfare, which means there are weapons of war that you can use. It says stout-hearted men who could keep ranks. They were not saying, I want to be the apostle, I want to be the prophet, or you know, I want to tell the pastor here what to do. Or No, they could keep ranks. They could say, I won't speak about that one, but I could come and submit to this one, submit to that function. I know where I am in the spirit. I know my grace. I could keep rank and march forward. Are you guys with him? Go with me to, uh, go with me to, the, go with me to verse, let's go to verse 38. Verse 38, all these men of war who could keep ranks came to Hebron with a loyal heart, say with a loyal heart, to make David king of all Israel. Their desire was for the promotion of someone else. You will never be able to fulfill the vision of God for your life until you work and fulfill the vision of somebody that God has sent. Are you guys with me? I have never went out to start my own ministry. I have gone to a place and waited, doesn't matter how many men of God has pulled me out, until those who were over me said, they had an encounter, God spoke to them, I have to do this. Doesn't matter how many dreams, how many visions, I knew or I know the power and revelation of being sent. You have went once and then you have sent once. Are you guys with me? And then you have some who just took a mic and went. So, uh, and nothing happens, nothing. They can preach nothing. To make David king over Israel and all the rest of Israel were of one mind, so the one mind, to make David king. Listen, let's go to, uh, let's carry on reading, let's carry on reading. I want to show you this, let's carry on reading. Two verses. It says, and they were there with David three days eating and drinking for their brethren had prepared for them next verse moreover so the moreover this is when a people understand rank they understand file they understand combat expert in war a loyal heart to fulfill a vision are you guys with me they prophesied and said that on the steps of the Paracroll monuments will a revival break out. In fact, they said there will be two locations of revival. Are you guys with me? It was William Branham and I believe it was John G. Lake. They said at Pretoria Showgrounds, you'll see a revival break out. 
where right now there's a revival breaking out. I think over 100, 200,000 people in the service. That is the son of a man who mentored me for the last five, six years, fathered me in the prophetic. Right now, as we speak on a Sunday, over 100,000 people in our midst, but we fail to see. And then William Branham said another word. He said, and there'll be an end time revival that will hit the nation of South Africa on the Porakral Monument of Krugersdorp. Now, if the one came to pass, you must know that a move of God is coming. Give me 300 hungry people, willing, loyal, those who are rank and file, know their position, stout hearted, of one mind and one heart. This nation is easy to take then. Are you guys with me? God will use whoever he wants. He will take the person in your midst here, sitting here, that you will never ever thought will be used by God. And he will raise them up. Moreover, those who were near to him, listen to what happened when all these conditions were put into place. From as far away as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali were bringing food on donkeys and camels, on mules and oxen, so with the provisions of flour and cakes of figs and cakes of raisins, wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly. Are you guys with me? For there was joy, say with the joy, in all of Israel. Meaning that when this anointing of war is falling, when a people is saying, but we are not going to give up, there will be joy in a nation. I don't listen or submit or care what the enemy has done to you or circumstances or a lack of finances God is looking for a certain type of person and saying I will put my hand upon that one and I hope there are people in this place that are saying we are part of that Gideon had too many people and God said no 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 I want less give me a thousand no 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 I want more less give me 300 300 men that are able to war because if you have those in there that are not able to war you're not going to win this battle are you guys with me and they looked into the water and they drank and he said send them to drink water those who will look put their face in the water and put their uh, uh, put their face into the water and drink God said those ones should get away because they are concerned about their own thirst only they look at the water and see their own face an Old Testament selfie are you guys with me but those who lap like a dog, taking their hand, lapping the water up, have the ability to see while they're feeding themselves, which means their concern is not only about themselves, but for the kingdom of God. He's saying those are able to war. Those are the ones that you will choose and I will beat thousands of Midianites. Are you guys with me? Give me 300. I don't want 10,000. We've never looked for numbers. In our conferences, we would have, we would unadvertise. You understand? Like, we literally have to unadvertise sometimes with our conferences by the first or second night to not get more people. When the anointing comes on you, your life will be changed. Strongholds will be broken. Strongholds is a lie that is built up in our mind that we have put to believe whether it is from a young age rejection whether it is from parents or religion it is a lie that we have put in a thought that becomes habitual becomes a stronghold that stronghold has a root and it builds up a fortress a fortress that has to be beaten down by one thing the word of God not the word as in the Bible here but the word as in Logos are you guys with me? Logos, rhema, is different to graphi. Graphi is the written word. Logos is the mind of God. The logic, the thinking. For Paul says that we have, who has the mind of Christ? How many have heard that scripture? Raise your hands. Let me say, we, we preach that, but we never preach the next sentence. For who has the mind of Christ? That they may instruct God what to do. Then Paul says, 
What's that? Then Paul says, who has the mind of Christ that he may instruct God what to do? Then he has the audacity to say, we have the mind of Christ. There's a realm where you can use the words where God had to come to Moses, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Moses and saying, Moses, look, let's just kill all these people and start over. Moses said, Lord, repent from your anger. Why did God even consider to go past him? He had shares in heaven. Are you guys with me? Abraham, before God destroyed Lot, he came as the Trinity and walked in what we call a theophany. Told Abraham and told Lot, why? Because when Abram gave to Melchizedek a tithe of all, Melchizedek being a type of Christ said, a tithe of everything, Melchizedek said, whoa, look, I've just given you bread and wine, but I have to reciprocate now. Now you are Abram of God. Blessed are you, the Bible says, Abram of God, not God of Abram. Everywhere the Bible says God of Abram, Isaac, Jacob. God is turning the thing around through Melchizedek. He says, no, 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 now it's Abram of God. Meaning you've just stepped into partnership with God. Because you decided to give a tithe of all your income, everything. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be richer than the kings in the countries that they live in. They'll come to Isaac and say, take your stuff and just leave out of the country. You are too great for us. You are too big. Abimelech came and said, listen, just leave. You are too big for us. You have too much. <laughs> Are you guys with me? Then, Abram of God, for you are possessor of heaven and earth. Say with the possessor of heaven and earth. We, we read this stuff wrong and we think God is the possessor of heaven and earth. No, no, no. He said to Abram, Abram, you are possessor of heaven and earth. That's why it's called Abram's bosom where people died when they went to the Old Testament. Abram owned it. Understand spiritual laws here. Are you guys with me? Is it too much? This Abram of God, possessor of heaven and earth. He said, I have to reciprocate this thing back. That's why Abram was the father of nations. God had to speak to him as a friend speaks to a friend face to face. Same with Moses. Because there was... He was obligated in a partnership to speak to him. When you go into partnership with the Holy Ghost, when you answer to a divine assignment upon your life, you will see that God will consult you before he moves or touches certain people or things. I know this is too much. I know this is too much. I think I've gone in too much. But so with these secrets, this is God exalting His Word above His name. There are things in the Scripture that we just have not discovered or seen. It doesn't mean that a preacher is wrong. No, we just haven't. It hasn't been revealed to us what they know in the Word. Are you guys with me? He cannot, God cannot move on your behalf unless you give Him, you give Him the right to do so. He's in partnership. The Holy Ghost in this meeting, let me show you this is how it works. If I come in and I am upset, God would not move because I am upset. He's in partnership with me. And He holds me responsible as well. Now if you are a son and a daughter of the King, carrying divine blood, a divine nature, we are partakers of His divine nature. If Paul can take a handkerchief and the Bible says they'll put the handkerchief on his body and those handkerchiefs they'll take over and put on the sick and they'll get healed. Raise the dead. If a handkerchief can carry the power, how much some more somebody who's carrying the DNA, the incorruptible seed of God, the, who is made in his image and his likeness, you and I, how much more can we carry his power? Are you guys with me? He is looking for a people that can die to themselves. That's why when Elisha was in the grave, it was even his bones, he was dead. He could raise somebody from the dead. 
But before he died, he tried to raise a boy from the dead seven times before something would happen. Because his flesh was in the way. Are you guys with me? But when he was dead in the grave, somebody just touched his bones and they were raised from the dead. If bones can carry the anointing, if a handkerchief can carry power, how much more you and I is strongholds in our mind that we have a saying the problem is up here not inside it's the way we think we think God doesn't want to bless us he doesn't want to heal us he doesn't want to use us it's because you know God is testing me or I'm going through this problem because I've done something wrong hey change your mindset so are you guys with me change the thoughts pattern and make it non-negotiables that God wants me to be blessed you will see within one year I don't care what they have said or what circumstances has, has provided or presented the situation. When you're under this anointing in this house, you will prosper. It is not an if or a but or a maybe. It is just a matter of time for the anointing to begin to work in your life. And I prophesy and I pray that the anointing that many have seen way before with revivalists, men of God, like Nikki van der Vestes and A.A. Allen, John G. Lake, that you have heard about this anointing, but now your eyes will begin to see it. For there will be a manifestation of the glory of God, a demonstration of His power. It is called the Day of the Saints, where you and I entered into. Are you guys with me? The glory movement is not laying hands on every person. But you can stand like this and somebody in the back can get touched under the glory of God. You will see in this conference is glory entering. There will be a cloud, a white cloud that will come into this place. You will be imparted and activated. When you're under this anointing, you will lay hands. You might have had laid hands your whole life, nothing happened. You will lay hands now and you will see something happening. Because I know my function. Let's stand to our feet, wherever you are. Are you guys with me? I think it was Marie that shared and I never knew it. But uh, she said, she prayed for people and never anything never happened. Nothing ever happened. Because she submitted to a pastor that was poorer than her. <laughs> Which is the truth. But, uh, uh, and then all of a sudden, being raised up or trained up by us, and uh, now, if somebody has demons, they're scared to sit with her. Importation. Say with me, importation. Importation is very real. Right now it's too late, it's half past eight. But the power of God is present. Are you guys with me? I'm a different minister, I leave it, I siphon it. I leave it, we build up, we build up, we get to the conference. You'll see something amazing happen. But my assignment is to tell you that you'll be used by God in this city. That God will break the strongholds of religion, tradition and false doctrine in this city. That those who are bound by hopelessness will be broken. And you will use a remnant that is in this place. Raise your hands all over this place. Raise your hands. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I receive tonight everything you have for me I believe that you can use me that I can be a glory carrier a city changer I believe I am anointed I know I am anointed father I pray for every person their hands raised in this place that those who are here, that your anointing will begin to touch them. That I pray and I command the atmosphere in the heavens to open. That even as John the Baptist had to lay hands on the Son of God Himself. For the heavens to open up. I pray as a prophet that in this city, it has begun for the heavens to open. That you have begun to mock already people to be used for your glory. That it doesn't matter what others say or others do or what has happened. It is just a matter of time. That within a year from now, it will, they will be unrecognizable. That this place will be unrecognizable. 
and that you will use them for your glory that I pray that even when it comes to the conference that this place you will show yourself off with miracle signs and wonders that you will speak through me and use my words that you will not I will not limit the spirit of God that your people will not limit him that tradition or religion will not touch this house but everything for the glory of God I prophesy that those who are in this house that their houses and their families will get saved delivered and set free that this anointing will be so tangible that even as they leave the meetings and especially the conference that is coming it will be tangibly upon them it will linger The residue of a visitation of God will linger upon their lives. And I pray for a start of a move of God. That you see our lives surrendered and we give you all the honor, all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's give a praise offering. Wherever you are. some church wherever you are I want to hear you shout and give him a praise amen amen God bless you love you and we'll see you I'll see you this week